Okay, here we go. Okay, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Hey, Mark, how you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? I'm up here. I got two uh, screens going on at once. But, um, yeah, did you see the title of my live? We're going to be um, discussing a few topics tonight um, regarding uh, Michael Jackson. I don't know if you happen to see the After Neverland documentary that was on HBO. It was two parts. Um, same here. I'm trying to stay warm, too. I think it's like uh, probably about 17 degrees now. So in the morning, it'll probably be back down to about five degrees but yeah the high today was like 20 or 21 but um yeah and r kelly they showed a sneak a sneak peek of his interview he um i guess you know i don't know if cbs contacted him or if he contacted cbs but anyway um he did an interview with gail king uh, from cbs and they show, like, a little part of it, little snippets of the interview um, this morning or, you know, this afternoon. And, man, Five, three, two, I, I don't know, Kels. I don't know, Kels. I cannot wait till the whole interview is aired because I'm going to be there for it. Um, he seems really uh, persistent. Um, trying to get us to believe he is innocent, claiming, you know, he even said stuff like, you gotta be stupid, um, if you believe these rumors, these allegations. Let me read exactly what he said. R. Kelly, the clips, but okay, the clip began with, uh, King, Gail King, she's interviewing him, um, and she's asking him about the charges, you know, the 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual assault um, from last month. And he claims the allegations against him are not true. And the clip started off with Gail asking Kells if he can say, she says specifically to R. Kelly, can you honestly sit here and say that you have never been with underage girls. Can you really say that? That's what Gail asked him. And he sat there and said, I sit here and say this. This is what he said. I had two cases back then that I said in the beginning of the interview that I would not talk about because of my ongoing case now. And then Kel said, um, who he, he repeatedly denied all the allegations against him, allegations against him, and accusations against him. Um, he said, I will tell you this. People are going back to my past, okay? That's exactly what they're doing. They're going back to the past and they're trying to add all of this stuff now to that to make all of this stuff that's going on now feel real to people. Basically, he told her, if people believe this, actually believe that I'm keeping people, um, keeping people hostage, that I'm starving people, he was like, quit playing, y'all. Quit playing. Just stop it. Just stop it. Hold up, y'all. He's up there. I didn't do none of this. I didn't do none of this stuff. This is not me. I am fighting for my effing life. That's literally what he said. Well, he said the actual word on the interview. He said, I am fighting for my effing life. And he said, <laughs> I mean, people are making me out to be a monster. Um, he, he started to get like really emotional. You know, he started to get like really emotional. Um, me, I'm just going to say he's a good actor. He's a good actor. He had plenty of experience, plenty of years in the entertainment industry. And I'm going to say he's a good actor. Um, He was like, y'all stupid. That's basically what he was saying. He actually said that stupid. He said that stupid. 
But he's basically telling us that we have no common sense because after that he said, use your common sense. This is what he was doing. Use your common sense. He said, forget, he looked right at the camera. He looked right at the camera and right into our eyes. He said, is this the camera, Gail? Is this the camera? Okay, y'all, use your common sense. Use your common sense. I did not do this. That's what he kept saying. Absolutely, he didn't do it. Um, he's also brought up the fact that he beat the case last time. Um, and he kept saying that people are trying to use the old cases to try to make these new allegations feel real or look real. But Gail was like, you know what? Your past is relevant. Your past is relevant. You was on a videotape urinating on a little girl. Okay, we all know about the family and what happened and why he wasn't, why he didn't go to jail for that. We all know about that, so we won't get all into that. But basically, he he got he got lucky. He got lucky that time. But um, you know, he was really upset and talking about that stupid and use your common sense and hate me if you want, love me if you want, but use your common sense. His words. How stupid would it be for him with his crazy past and what he's been through to be a monster, to hold girls against their will, to chain them up in his basement, to not let them out to eat without permission uh, unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. <laughs> He was like, stop it, stop it, just stop it. Y'all quit playing. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me. I'm fighting for my effing life. Oh, my God. Y'all, and then he started crying. Did y'all see it? Oh, my God. Y'all need to look it up on the internet. Google it. Um, it's, People got it on YouTube. Just, it, just look it up. R. Kelly, Interviews with Gail King. Um, he, he literally, he literally sounds now, now I said he sounds like a good actor and yes, uh, Martha Traveler, you are absolutely right. He, um, you are absolutely right. He did marry Aaliyah when she was underage and that's what, see, this is why R. Kelly cannot be believed by the masses. This is why R. Kelly cannot be believed by the masses because he keeps insinuating that he never slept with underage girls and he keeps insinuating that he never um slept with uh little girls or molested or held them against their will or none of that but he was married to Aaliyah when she was underage and we have proof of that it's public information I didn't show the uh certificate before like, I don't know, two months ago, maybe three months ago, back in like, I don't know, when the documentary came out, Surviving R. Kelly. But I even showed the a certificate. A lot of people showed the certificate. There is proof that he married an underage girl. She was 15 years old. So how can he sit there on Gail King's platform and sit there and say repeatedly and call us stupid and tell us we have no common sense when we know for a fact he married Aaliyah at 15. That part, that part, I don't get it. I don't get it. Y'all, y'all help me understand. Help me understand. Um, again, the phone lines is open. If you want to call in 605-475-4075, um, the access code and everything is right there on the screen. Um, y'all need to help me understand because this, and he was up there crying, like crying. And, and it didn't, it didn't seem sincere to me. Huh? What's up DC 12? It didn't seem sincere to me. Hey family at heart. How you doing? <laughs> I'm just sitting up here discussing this mess with R. Kelly and his, um, his uh, production of that interview um, that seemed like it was so rehearsed. Uh, you know, with Gail King, we saw a sneak peek 
of this big interview that R. Kelly is doing with Gail King to confess his innocence. And he was sitting on that interview and repeatedly saying he's innocent. He never uh, had relations with underage girls. Although we, again, all know he married Aaliyah at 15. So, therefore, can't believe nothing he say. <laughs> can't believe nothing he say. <laughs> Thank you, hon. Thank you, hon. So, you know, that's one topic that we're discussing tonight. Y'all can all give me y'all feedback on that that sneak peek of an interview um, about R. Kelly breaking down and crying. I think I seen a tear. I, I think I seen a tear. Maybe two. I, I, I don't know. But then the backlash that Oprah's receiving. How do y'all feel about that? How do y'all feel about um, the documentary on Michael Jackson called After Neverland? Like, do do y'all have HBO? Any of y'all have HBO or some other uh, resource, you know, to watch that documentary? Um, it, it, it was a lot. It was a lot. But how many of y'all actually believe the two guys, even though, even though when they were younger, they testified that MJ never did anything to them? Even though they testified that he's never done anything to y'all, to them. How do you feel about that? Um, the guy's names in the documentary was Wade Robson and James Safacek. I think that's how it's pronounced. Safacek, but um, hold on, somebody's hitting me up right now to order some cupcakes for Saturday. That's not going to happen. I have a big party I have to do Saturday. Anyway, sorry, got sidetracked for a minute. One of my customers hit me up for some cakes, but um, anyway, anyway, uh. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. The the guys' names who are alleging that Michael Jackson um, actually did sexually assault them, um, violate them, uh, molest them, uh, groom them, um, seduce them, you know, everything that you could imagine a child predator will do. That's what they claim Michael Jackson did do. Now, some people are believing the story because of the fact that we all know even adults, like women, grown men, they sometimes have a very difficult time coming forward and admitting what somebody has done to them that has damaged them. We all know the different reasons why people do it. We can sit there and continue to say, what about, what about, what about, why didn't, why didn't, why didn't. We can we can do that all the time. Like I said earlier, a couple of weeks ago, what about ism is a serious disease in the United States. What about ism is a serious disease in the United States. Um, some people have always, have always thought that Michael Jackson had used to have sex with and molest, abuse little boys. Little boys. Now, it might be because of the fact that we never actually really seen him dating, per se, women. It may have been because of the fact that he loved having little boys over his house all the time. It may be because of the fact that the little boys that he had over his house all the time slept in the bed with him. Um, it might be because of those things. It could be because of other things. But I, no matter how much I love Michael Jackson, no matter how much I loved R. Kelly, I believe both of them are guilty. Now, if y'all agree or disagree, we can all agree to disagree. Y'all can give me y'all points. Y'all can type them in the chat or y'all can give me a call. The phone number is listed on the screen, 605-475-4075, access code 753-359, because I am taking calls. 
Um. My. Okay, Wade. Wade. He claims that it wasn't until later in his life that he really understood that he was really being abused. Like, he started, he claims that Michael Jackson started um, abusing them, abusing him at seven, that he basically groomed him at first. Um, he was always buying him things, giving him things, um, showering him with so much love and affection, um, claiming that nobody else could, you know, love him that way. Basically, you said you never liked his music. You never liked MJ music. I was Janet Jackson. Oh, I love Janet too. I loved Janet too. <laughs> Rhythm Nation. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I love Janet too. Um, Michael Jackson, I, I wasn't like what you would call one of his biggest fans. I wasn't one of his biggest fans. Um, but I liked a lot of his, uh, music. Um, I liked his dancing. I mean, he's, he's, he was an amazing entertainer. That's what I liked about him. He was an amazing entertainer. That's what I mainly liked about him. Um, I stated before, you know, uh, maybe several different lives. I was raised in a really, really religious household. So a lot of the music, as you know, religious people would call worldly, you know, worldly. I heard that when I was like at family members' houses or from a neighbor's house or if I would spend the night at, you know, somebody else's house. Like all my favorite, um, favorite uh, musicians and um, singers rappers, all that from like the 80s, like the early 80s, um, I heard that away from home. So I didn't hear a lot of people's music, but like the hot songs that was played, you know, on the radio all the time, you know, so I, I can't say I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan because I didn't know a lot of his music, but I heard like the big hits on the radio, you know, and I liked him. I liked him as an entertainer. Um, uh, but, but it is what it is, honey. It is what it is. Um, I've always believed, I have always believed that he has done something, that he touched people that he should not have been touching. I, be I believe that. And like these little boys, well, they grown men now, but when they were little boys, um, claiming that this man loved them so much. Like, they allege that, and, th and this is believable. This is this is believable. I don't know how most of y'all feel about Michael Jackson, but it's very believable for me as far as most predators, when they groom you, when they, um, all right, see you later, family at heart. Um, when they groom you, when they seduce you, and they give you presents, and they give you gifts, they treat you like, they try to treat you like 10 times better than your family and your friends to make you feel like they love you more than anybody in the world and that they would do anything for you. And then after they get you sucked in with that, then they start telling you stuff like, if anybody find out, I'm going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. They're not going to believe you. Da, 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 da. They start giving you those kind of ideas in your head. And when you're a very young child without the capabilities of thinking as an adult, you know, um, you start believing that stuff. So even when they was going to court, I, I can it, it's not far-fetched that they would deny he was doing anything because they wanted to protect him. They wanted to protect him. That's what they're claiming. That I, a lot of people believe it. I'm not the only one. I still think he's a great entertainer. I still love his music. But my question tonight is, how do y'all feel about it? How do y'all feel about the MJ situation? How do y'all feel about the R. Kelly sneak peek interview with him crying and denying that he never slept with any underage girls, even though, even though, we know he married Aaliyah at 15. 
So how do y'all feel about that? And let me get a drink real quick because my throat's dry. But, <clears throat> oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's not forget. Um, Oprah. Now, you know, Oprah is a part of this MJ After Neverland um, documentary. She's receiving a lot of backlash. A lot of backlash. I don't know if it's just because of the fact that maybe they didn't think somebody on her uh, level being of the black community and stuff like that would be the one who would take this under her wings. They probably didn't expect her to do that. It could be because they don't believe that MJ did any of these things. Um, why, why do y'all think she's getting a lot of backlash? Do y'all think it's because, um, it's just coming from people who think he's innocent? Who think Michael's innocent? Or do you think it's because they just don't want to destroy his image? And, and, and okay, we can't say that he had a clean image. We cannot say that. Even if it has never been proven in the court of law that he um, sexually assaulted, molested, anything like that with young boys, even if he's never been, uh, you know, convicted, um, he he didn't have a very clean image his entire life, especially at the end of his life, you know, how he passed and how he was addicted to drugs and how, you know, um, hey, one, one queen, seven queens, how you doing this evening? Um, if you can, uh, see from the live, uh, the title of the live, we're discussing R. Kelly's sneak peek interview that he did with, uh, Gail King. And we're also discussing, uh, Oprah's, the backlash that Oprah is receiving, you know, after the After Neverland documentary on Michael Jackson allegedly, um, molesting children. Like, they're, they're now coming out now that he molested them. A lot of people think that they're lying. A lot of people think that they're lying because of the fact when they were younger, they did not say when they had to testify in court, they said he didn't do anything to them. Um, now they're claiming it really happened, but they were afraid. He always taught them and groomed them and seduced them to um, believe that if they told on him, he would go to jail, he would go to prison, he wouldn't be able to sing anymore, uh, he wouldn't be able to be entertain people anymore. And them looking to him as a god, like a lot of people um, around the uh, world, I was about to say country, but around the world looked to Michael Jackson like he was just a god of entertainment. And he could do no wrong. But yeah, One King, One Queen, Seven Kings, it was a, it, the documentary, some people couldn't watch it, and some people got really, really, felt really disgusted after watching it. I mean, when I was watching The View, I don't know how many of y'all watched The View, you know, with Whoopi. Whoopi wasn't on there this morning because she is out sick. Um, but when I was watching it, there were people on the platform who claim they will never, ever listen to another MJ record again. If they hear his music playing, they are not going, they will walk out the room, anything to not listen to his music. He said, DC 12, I don't like the time they came out with this. And, and I feel you on that. I really, I really do feel you on that. Like, okay, that's where I, that's where I, um, that's where my differences is with the R. Kelly situation and the MJ situation. Because all through the years, we've heard allegations about R. Kelly. All through the years. Um, MJ, we heard allegations, but it was years ago. Years ago. And then they come out after he was dead. Like, okay, they were asked in the interview, 
If MJ was still alive, would you have been able to do this? Would you have been able to come forward and make this documentary? Would you? And see, that's where a lot of people, that's where a lot of people is, is conflicting because of the fact if he was still alive, if he was still alive, then he could, like R. Kelly, he could defend himself. He could, even if he was charged, he could go to court. He could bail himself out. He could get a lawyer. He could, you know, he could defend himself. But now that he's dead, it's like, should we let the dead rest? Should we let the dead rest? Even if they did something horribly wrong. Now, these are allegations. But even if he did, if it was true and he did something horribly wrong, should we let the dead rest? I don't know. That's what a lot of people are thinking. And that's why there's a lot of backlash against Oprah because a lot of people feel like, okay, even if MJ did do it, even if he did do it, which a lot of people throughout the years have always thought that MJ was guilty of doing stuff with young boys. Always. Always. But see, you know how sometimes we say, what about the parents? Like, okay, with the R. Kelly situation, again, here's my differences with these two situations. Uh, with R. Kelly, pe a lot of people's like, where is the parents? Where is the parents? Um, a lot of the parents, they could say they were paid. They sold their daughters. They sent their daughters to him. They, you know, a lot of people can say that. But in this case with MJ, a lot of these boys who slept with him, we know they slept with him. He even said it in interviews that the boys sleep in his bed. And where was the parents? They was like in the other room. And my thing is, <laughs> my thing is when we're discussing that part, uh, I would not ever put my daughter or my son in a man's bed at 7, 8, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I would never. I don't care if I'm sleeping on a pillow outside the door. That part. I never understood that. I've never understood that. Ever. I. You know, the only time, the only time that my son actually slept with an older person, um, it was when he was a little baby. He was about two, and he used to have seizures all the time. And one day, I had to be at school because I, I went to college around the time my first son was born, and I worked. And so my mom would be watching my son sometime and my little brother, um, who was a teenager, they would keep my son while I was in college. And so when he had seizures and he had severe asthma, he had seizures. I mean, he was a really sick baby when he was younger. So whoever was at the house with him, they kept him near them. You know, so one night when my son had a seizure, my brother was sitting there playing his video games and he had my son near him. And as soon as he heard, felt the bed shake, he turned around, did what he was supposed to do, called 911, called me. Other than that, other than that, my sons have never been in a bed with just an older person, a teenager, a man. That's something you just don't do. So I don't, I still don't understand that part. All right, Mark the Traveler, see you later. I'll catch you on your lives. But, and that's true, one queen, seven kings, they say the money is the root to all evil. Um, MJ used to do a lot of stuff for those kids. I mean, he used to do a lot of stuff for them and their families. And I still, I, I don't care if you paid all our bills for a year. I'm not allowing my young children to sleep in a bed with a man. I don't care if it's God himself. <laughs> I don't care if it's God himself. No. If we were to go see a celebrity or something like that, like, okay, MJ House, he had all these amusement parks and giraffes and zebras and monkeys and whatever else, you know, on his property. If we were to spend the night, 
you know, uh, where's our room, MJ? Where's our room? We need a king bed <laughs> or two queens or so, or some bunk beds or something. We all going to be in the same room with each other if we were to stay at his residence. But no, I'm not sleeping in another room and my child is sleeping in your bed. So, again, I, I, I never understood that part. But Robson, you know, he testified when that had started, when they had started going to his crib and he, um, I mean, he didn't testify, but he said in the documentary that it started around the age of seven. And a lot of people just was disgusted by the documentary because seven is so young. And MJ can't defend himself. He's not here. And no matter what we think about um, him being guilty or him being innocent or how we feel about the allegations from back in the day, um, he's not here to defend himself. So I kind of feel like even though I might believe it happened, I kind of feel it's unfair that they come out after he's dead. So I'm going to give MJ that. Um, I, I, It's kind of unfair that they would do it now because you, you know how people be like, you know, <laughs> you know how you know how people play the dozens and they like, yo mama, yo mama. And then they're like, man, you can't talk about her mama because her mama dead. You can't, you just, you know, it's like no matter what they did, if, if you didn't solve the issue or bring it to their attention or, you know, while they were alive, what's going to happen when they're dead? I mean, it's not like you could what's going to happen? We can't put them in jail. We, you, you're not going to get any money from the estate because you, you have no proof that it happened. So even if we do believe you, what's going to happen? Nothing. As you know, as with the R Kelly case, he's still alive. He's still kicking. <laughs> he's still kicking and ticking. Um, so he can defend himself, he can go to court, he can get a lawyer, you know, all this jazz. And no matter how we feel about him, whether he did it or not do it, he's able to defend himself. So, I, and, I, and I believe R. Kelly is, is a very horrible person. I do believe he is a very... Okay, and see, that's why a lot of people are tripping with Oprah, D.C., because they feel like I do, and a lot of other people... Um, let the dead just, just and, and I'm not trying to downplay the parts that, um, okay, like the, the guys were saying, the guys were saying that, you know what, they were, they were afraid to testify before they didn't, they didn't want him to get in trouble. They really, really, really loved him. They really loved Michael Jackson. He, they, they claim he really loved them, like more love than you should give a child. You know, you know what I mean in that way. But um, they claim basically, you know, now that they're coming out and they did this documentary, they're like, okay, it seems like, you know, not only were we victims then, but we're being victimized again because people is like, even if it did happen, why now? Why bring it up now? And one of the guys, he actually said, Robson, Wade Robson, he actually said, if my son never would have been born, I think there's a real good chance that I still be living in silence. That's what Wade said. He basically, um, the reason why he joined in this documentary was because once he saw his son and he said, let me see what he said. Hold on. It says, um, he gained perspective of being a father. And he said specifically, this is his words. Um, I didn't know that I was at that time cut off. Like what, what both of the guys were saying in the documentary was that, he kept them cut off and he kept them like away from their families 
and he did a lot of things for them, with them, to them, away from his families, and always tried to um, make sure that they understood that he loved them much more than their family, much more than their mom and dad, you know? And so he said, you know, basically he was really cut off um, as a little boy. But he said once his son was born and he's like, oh my God, this is what a child looks like. This is what a child acts like. This is what a child thinks. This is how a child behaves. He said, this was me, an innocent child. And so that's when he decided that he wanted to speak out. That's when he decided. He was like, you know what? Maybe I need to tell somebody about this. And then they were thinking like, you know, um, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Safe Chuck. Yeah, Safe Chuck. He actually... No, I'm sorry, Wade. It was still Wade. It was Wade Robson. He said um, he had asked himself, is there anything that could, good that can come out of this whole situation? He said, could I do something good with this bad situation? With the horrible thing that has happened to him, what could he do to maybe turn it into something good? Is there a way... Is there a platform? Is there a place where I can tell this story that would be a credible, powerful platform to tell it within? Where the estate has to finally listen. Because years after he died, years after MJ died, four years after MJ died, you know, around like the 2013 lawsuit, um... He said it wasn't about money. He he claims it wasn't about money. But the estate, which when he says the estate, he's referring to basically um, MJ's family, his friends, probably power of attorneys, you know, things like that. Um, he claims it wasn't about money. He just wanted them to, he wanted to be heard and he wanted to listen so I guess that's why he decided, you know, he said if the state won't listen, if they keep denying my allegations, if they keep saying he didn't do anything to me, I'm going to take it to a higher platform. And that's how they got involved in this documentary. But and back in 2013, his, uh, his case, the judge ruled, well, it was in 2017, a judge ruled against Robson because Robson had filed new negligence negligence claims against MJJ Productions and MJJ Ventures, two companies owned by Michael Jackson. In December 2017, a judge ruled that those groups were not liable for Robson's exposure to Jackson, so he did not rule on the credibility of the allegations. And that makes sense to me. Why would you, why would you why would you try to sue a production company that he owned when that production company... Okay, we talking. I can see if... Okay, I think I think what's more important in this situation is it's not like um, MJ stole some money from somebody or he owes some money for somebody writing him a song or you know, performing in one of his concerts or something like that, and they going after him because, hey, he owes me money. I have proof right here. He owes me money. Here's my unpaid bills. You know, here's the promissory notes. Here's the, you know, the uh, contracts. And, you know, I want, I, I want to get paid. So I can see, in that case, going against, you know, the production companies and, you know, things that he owned, you know, his estate. But in this case, where you claim that when you were young and you testified in court that it did not happen, that he never touched you, and then you come back later, years down the line, not saying that I don't believe him because, like, again, I said, I believe something happened with some little boys and MJ. I do believe that. 
but he's dead and he can't defend himself. And on top of that, you have no proof that he did it. And then you try to sue the production companies. So anywho, anywho, that that wasn't about to happen. Uh, <laughs> and even when James, uh, <laughs> when James joined the other guy who was on the documentary, even when he joined the lawsuit, the judge still dismissed it again. So he he dismissed it again. The same lawsuit was dismissed by a judge. So, the judge is kind of thinking where I'm thinking, and we're probably where you're thinking, too. Like, you said he didn't do it. Now he's dead, and you're coming back saying he did it. But you don't have any proof, and you want a lawsuit? Uh, make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. <laughs> so, anywho, anywho, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, one thing that Safe Chuck did say, uh, he hasn't forgiven his mother. Towards the end of the interview with Oprah, he claims that he has not yet. This is James, Safe Chuck. He claims he has not yet forgiven his mother. Yes, it's very interesting and disturbing. One Queen, the documentary, I'm telling you, it, it was... It was a lot. It was a lot. It was a part one. It was a part two. Um, it was a lot. It was a lot. And some people, as they, some people were so disturbed and disgusted by it that they swore off MJ forever. They are muting MJ. They are muting his music, getting rid of all his music, never playing his music again at any functions around the house. I mean, the people on The View this morning, like a couple of ladies on The View this morning said the same thing. I am so disgusted. I am muting Michael Jackson. So, but Safe Chuck, who says he's never forgiven his mother. Let me get another drink. Making sure I got all your comments read. Okay, I got all the comments read. Okay, I'm going to go on. Um, Oprah asked him. Actually, she asked both of them. Oprah asked both of them if they've forgiven their moms. Because keep in mind, their moms took you, I mean took you, took, took them to see Michael Jackson. And they allowed them over and over, like he slept. They slept in this man's bed on a nightly basis. On a nightly basis, you allow your child to sleep in a man's bed on a in a on a nightly basis. They claim that he molested them and had sex with them and sexual activities every night. While the parents slept in another room or just weren't there. You said, I think nope, Oprah knew the truth, and this is probably why she decided to go ahead and do it. Um, she is already a billionaire, so of course it's not for the money. Exactly. Exactly. I know why she did it, and you are absolutely right. We we right here. <laughs> we is right here. I get it. I get it, Oprah. I get it. Ain't no you ain't getting no backlash from me. <laughs> not from Primetime TV. You are not getting a backlash from me. Um, but again, I understand where other people are coming from. Like I said, it's not that I don't believe that it's happening. It's not that. It's just like, okay, where do we go from here? There, there's nowhere to go from here. There's, there's, there's nothing that they can possibly get out of it besides getting it off their chest and airing it to the world, but without any kind of proof. Or anything. I don't even know if. I guess just getting it off their chest. You know helps relieve some of that pressure. That was on them. And I get that part. I do get that part. So I'm not. I, I, I'm the kind of person who would never victim shame. Never victim shame. Because I know personally. 
what it's like for somebody to take advantage of you. I know a lot of people close to me who have been taken advantage of. So I know what people go through and I know how hard it is for others to get that off their chest and to let people know about it. But this situation is just so different because he's not here anymore. He's not here anymore. And some people, again, it's like, just let sleeping dogs, like uh, DC say, let sleeping dogs lay, let dead dogs lay, let the dead rest, you know? But as far as them getting it off their chest, they claim that they wanted the estate. I guess they, I think it's, it's more of not just, like like Oprah said, Oprah said it's bigger than Michael Jackson. I think what Oprah is trying to say is when she says it's bigger than Michael Jackson, I think what she's trying to say is basically so many celebrities, black, white, is is getting out there that so many celebrities have taken advantage of people and it's normally people who are weak disadvantaged, not so well off, gullible, naive. I mean, we probably can't do much about situations as far as people being taken advantage of in their own homes by a brother or uncle or mother or sister or auntie or cousin or whatever. But I think they just... It's this Me Too thing, this Me Too movement that has taken over over the last few years. And I think that's what it's all about. Like, trying to pressure, put pressure on people, other celebrities that might be possibly doing this kind of stuff to people or thought about doing it or know somebody else who's done it. Maybe it's kind of like another chance of trying to bring people, bring justice to people and perhaps pull some people out the closet or keep them from hurting other people. That, that's what I think this about. I mean, and, and it's like, it's the music industry and beyond. Yes, it's the music industry, television industry. I mean, <laughs> it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's entertainment period. It's everywhere. And you can't fix everybody. You can't fix every situation. You can't correct all the wrongs. I mean, we are very small compared to the issue. We are very small compared to the issue. And that's what Oprah is trying to say. This this issue is much, much, much bigger than just Michael Jackson. And I know a lot of people... Um, have thought that maybe okay we all know Michael some of them suffered abuse at the hands of their father that's the only one that really um the children have spoke about nobody else but a lot of people think that there was more abuse than what's being said you know what I mean hey silly mommy how you doing Thanks for stopping through for the chat. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. A lot of people haven't seen it yet, but the sneak peek interview with R. Kelly where he's talking to Gail King from CBS and it's like an hour and a half interview and he's claiming he's innocent and he's never had relations with anybody underage. And then the Michael Jackson situation where those two guys are coming out you know, in the documentary saying he molested them. It's a lot going on right now. So we just been talking about that. And I've been trying to get people's feedback on the situation. Um, if anybody don't wants to call in, I'm going to turn the phone lines off. But I had the phone lines open just in case anybody wants to come in and, you know, say how they felt about either um, topic, MJ or R. Kelly um, on TV crying calling us <laughs> stupid, we ain't got no sense, 
Um, use your head. Use your head. That's what he kept saying. Use your head. What I look like after all that stuff that happened back in the day to mess around with some young girls and keep them locked up and starve them and abuse them and all this. <laughs> and the fact that he keeps claiming that he has never had a relationship with any underage girls. Man, rest in peace, Aaliyah. That's all I got to say. Rest in peace, Aaliyah. That's all I got to say on that one. On that one. But anyway, if y'all got anything else to say about the uh, either one of these topics, put it in the chat. Put it in the comment section after the video goes off. Um, I'm going to keep my eye open on both of these stories. Keep my ears open. Um, today was just a sneak peek of the R. Kelly uh, interview with Gail King from CBS the morning show I think they're going to show the actual interview I think either I think they said either tomorrow or Thursday but anywho I'll post it on my platform I'll put the uh, notification up so you guys if you if you tap my bell on my notifications make sure you tap the bell if you haven't already got it tapped so that you can get my notifications every time I schedule a live um, you'll get the notification of what time and what day I'm going live so you can you know be prepared for it and you know so you can join us in the discussion but anyway y'all I'm about to get off here a sister got to get up early in the morning to go to work got to go to work <laughs> and in the meantime and in between time prime time squad as usual stay safe be blessed and i'm out deuces good night